Take responsibility for yourself. Exercise your self-motivation and self-determination. Practice free enterprise in your holistic home office. Avoid selfish ambition, which is the dark side of human nature. Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Good morning. I figured I'd do this at least one more time. I'm writing, a, telling the story about myself, I'm trying to introduce me and the website to you. Uh, let you know that uh, reading these stories and writing these story and watching these videos is uh, very valuable. Um, the education I have is fast, and I, and I th and the neat thing about it, I think it's the best education because I combine both science and religion in my worldview. I have a very global perspective. I've always liked the idea of world government. And uh, I have a global perspective of things. I, I'm a very patriotic. I like the United States. It's my favorite nation. I also like the United Nations, even though yeah, I, I don't. There's a lot of things going on in both of them I don't like. Believe me, but I do like the United Nations. I like the United States and the United Nations, and all the other nations are good too. I don't hate any nations or anything like that. There's a few that I'm like my least favorite nations but mostly I like I love the human race and um, that's what I'm about that's one of the, my main teachings of what I say you know my but and the point is is that you, I believe that if you read these writings and what I've written in these stories and even though my style is kind of amateurish you know I didn't go to school and get a lot of education I went to school, I got some education from school, and they kind of pointed me in certain directions, but I got most of my education just by reading books, thousands of books, and, um, you know, so I, I didn't have, speaking of eliminating the middleman, I, I, I don't really have that, I just got the, you know, I read the books that Albert Einstein wrote, and William Marston, and, you know, Abraham Maslow, and all these scientists and you know explorers uh, and they wrote books about what they discovered and I read those books you know the Federalist Papers you want to be a, understand America and the American philosophy and the American culture read the Federalist Papers that was the stories about that they wrote you know back when they were trying to convince everybody that the U.S. Constitution was a good idea and they explained it in great detail it's like a book explaining the Constitution of the United States written by the people who wrote the Constitution of the United States or some of them anyway there's three authors three different authors and but I think I have a very good perspective it's you know I'm not any special or anything like that I'm your peer you know, I don't believe, I, I never did like the idea of having clergy and teachers and stuff like that. I like teachers, but I don't like putting anybody on a pedestal. I like that whole idea of we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. I like that. You know, to me, the American Revolution was about abolishing any ruling class. We don't need no ruling class. The people will rule themselves. And, uh... We're going to have an administrative state that, that you know, because there's going to be a nation, you know, a state, and that's necessary. That's part of being civilized is having a government and all that, and we need that. And so, but the government is serves the people. They don't rule over the people. They serve the people, and you know, and there's got to be the rule of law and all that, natural law and all that, and the uh, you know, civil laws. And, and, economical you know you need the economy needs to be well regulated to make sure it's fair and, and just you know freedom equality and justice for all are good ideas so I'm going to be writing and reading about Linux you know and computers and home office I, I need to get kind of focus back on the home office theme because I think you know, teaching people how to prosper 
is a good idea. You know, you want to help poor people, you know, in eliminate the, you know, the income inequality. If you want to solve that problem, then teach the poor people how to work, how to earn money, how to make money, you know, and get really good at it. You know, learn how to make deals, learn how to trade, you know, make good deals with people. Make sure everybody you trade with gets a good deal. That's the first thing, the idea you got to learn is to make sure everyone you trade with gets a good deal. You know, work hard, work smart, work safe, work, you know, work hard and, and you know, have fun. Life on earth is an adventure. And so make sure you have fun and share that fun with the people around you and make the world a better place. You know, being productive is a very important part of holistic human nature. And you, you know, you have to be productive. Not being, being productive is not healthy. You have to be productive in order to be healthy. That's human nature. That's a very important part of human nature is being productive. So figure out a way to be productive, get really good at trading, whatever your skill is, your, your little niche in the free marketplace, the one worldwide free marketplace and exercise that and, and make it better, get better at it, you know, and practice and get really good at it and get good at trading. Um, and making deals with people is a good idea. I got to, you know, for me, I'm really smart. I'm not all that socially, uh, you know, graceful. I'm kind of clumsy. I'm like, you know, absent mind professor, you know, kind of personality. I'm always thinking about weird things, you know. Um, but it's like, uh, I like myself and I, I believe I can help you. I can help anybody you know I'm not more important than anybody I'm not less important than anybody I like but and I can help anybody I don't care how smart you are how rich you are or poor or not whatever I can help you my my ideas and opinions are just my ideas and opinion I have no authority over anything you know I'm you know not any you know I don't I believe in the manifestation of God, you know, Baha'u'llah, and he is God messenger, you know, for today, these, this time on earth, and I, you know, but I am, I am who I am, I am Aoda, you know, and that's, Aoda is just a name, I found out that they came from the island of man, and uh, Aoda is the god of the hearth, you know, the fire, the god of fire, and the hearth, and you know, in, we're talking, thinking, you know, the family gathered around the fire and warmth and light and of the fire, and then they migrated in, in southern Ireland. They were bred, literally bred like cattle, to be uh, warriors to defend the kingdom, and so then, like you know, the clan, and, and then they migrated from southern Ireland to northern Scotland they got in a big battle over in Edinburgh and then they lost and so they were kind of exiled to as far northwest in uh, Scotland as you can get and that's where I got my Viking and you know blood you know mostly were Celtic you know Celtic people and um, so Celtic and Irish on my dad's side Celtic and Viking on my dad's side and uh, and my mom her family comes from like central England so that's like the Angles and the Saxons so the the Celtic Viking Angles and Saxons are that those are my ancestors and uh, boy that's an in interesting story adventure you know my life I stayed you know like Adam you know he founded his civilization he, he grew up in Turkey in in migrated into Iran, you know, and he uh, founded a civilization. He, and, and I believe all the stone megaliths like we find in Egypt and Peru and all around the world, you know, and all off the coast, that civilization, that was a global civilization founded by Baha'u'llah. 
And they built the pyramids, the Egyptian pyramids. And uh, it was an imperialistic, I, I'm getting, you know, this idea of the imperialistic, you know, imperial pyramid, I call it, where you have one man, you know, the alpha male in charge, the pharaoh in charge, and everybody does what the pharaoh says. That's the, I call that the imperial pyramid. And uh, so, and then there's this other system that's more of, you know, kind of a democratic, you know, system where people, Everybody's in a, you know, there's a team and they work and vote and decide what to do. And, um, but then when the ice age ended, sea level rose about 300 feet and it flooded all the big cities along the coastlines back then. And we find those cities off the coast of every continent. You know, they've found cities all around the world that were underwater, you know, and those are the big cities that built all that stuff you know but when when the that when that happened it created a dark age and so you no know, everybody forgot about what happened before that and noah he lived or i think noah lived like in ukraine the ukraine side of a small lake you know inland sea you know in that valley where the black sea is now and when sea level rose and poured through the Bosporus and filled up the Black Sea, that Noah lived in that area and he was had built the ark and he floated around the Black Sea for 40 days or whatever it was and came to shore on the north shore, you know, on the south shore of the Black Sea in Turkey, right there by Mount Ararat. Probably the very first land he saw was Mount Ararat because it's a huge mountain, just like Mount Rainier is here in Seattle. You know, it kind of looms over the whole neighborhood. And that's, so they created Gobekli Tepe, Noah and his kids founded Gobekli Tepe and that's where civilization spread from there. And, um, and we have all our history, you know, the history is founded by Noah is the, his, is the civilization that we're in now. And then, of course, Baha'u'llah, he founded another, a new civilization that will last forever. But, and it's growing up and it's global and it's, but it's uh, the old civilizations you know, the regional civilizations like China and India and Africa and Europe, those are all disintegrating. You know, Western civilization is disintegrating. It's pretty obvious it's disintegrating, you know. I don't know about the others, but I know Western civilization is in pretty bad shape, man, right now. And uh, But this global civilization founded by Baha'u'llah is... is, is taking you know it's it's growing and thriving and grow you know and it's getting more and more you know it's still weak and feeble and new and, you know it's like a baby you know doesn't even hardly know how to walk yet but it's there it's here now and so and i like to tell stories about that you know mostly i'm not trying to t teach people individual human beings how to thrive during life on earth you know, during your life on earth, I want to help you. No matter what you're interested in, whether you like computers or, or sales or whatever it is that you like doing, the ideas and stuff that I talk about are, they're kind of universal ideas. You know, it's just a worldview. It's just an idea. It's a catalyst to try to inspire you to, to unleash, you know, to, uh, you know, your inner, inner, your talents, you know, you're born with certain talents in there, but the, those talents are potential. You have to exercise those talents and then practice and get really good at it. And it's just like muscles, you know, if you lift weights, you're going to get big, strong arm muscles and all that, you know, and it's the same thing with, you know, some of the, your talents, you exercise those talents and you get re really good at it. And so that's what I'm trying to teach you to do. And this world unity, this one world unity is very valuable information that will help you succeed in life. And, um, you know, that's what I'm here to do is to help you succeed in life. That's what I want to do. And that's what I am doing.
and I should I highly recommend you read all the stories and watch all the videos because it's a valuable education so thanks and uh, thanks for listening and watching and reading the stories and uh, peace be with you But you know who I am. I'm kind of a person that, that I've struggled most of my life. I, it's been a very harsh life. I I like myself. I'm happy to be alive. I know that. That's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> my mom was 14 years old when I was born. You know, and that's pretty, you know, it was, she left my dad when I was two and he was a hypnotist, you know, which is, you know, and then it was just, there was a lot of violence and with my stepfather, my first stepfather, and then my second stepfather, he wasn't very violent with that, but he was, had other issues and it was just kind of terrible, my, you know, and a lot of bad things, you know, a lot of good things too, you know, we had a lot, lots of fun. It was a big party, especially with my second stepdad. That's it was a big life was a party, you know. That's when the party started, and we partied. And you know, I grew up in a bar, you know, and and so I thought I I've always liked to read. I've always been attracted to reading. Although some of the my mom she used to read these books, some really terrible books, you know. One of you know like the Executioner was about this guy that used to go around killing all the mafia people because they murdered his family and it was just and then I remember reading this we'd go my parents would go play pinnacle over at some other farmer's house and we would uh, go over there and I would read they had these two books and it, each one was the size of a, a like a world atlas that you would find in the library you know huge books and each page would have two pictures on it and uh with the uh, and it was all about World War One, and each picture would have like a three to five line caption under it explaining what it was, and they were all black and white pictures of World War One. And it was an interesting story, but the you know I mean my view of life was like it, it's a battle, life on Earth is a war, you know, because I was like probably like I don't know twelve thirteen. 14 years old when I was reading that stuff and you know and all that Mac Bolan and the executioner killing the mafia you know warring with the mafia and uh, other terrible things that I read you know just horror horror I, you know it was just like bad stuff man and uh, but I also one good thing my mom sent me to or you know and she didn't like make me go to the Mormon church but she sent us to the Mormon church and we would go to Sunday school and I learned this other you know that actually that's a lot of bad things happen in that story too but it was uh, there was God in that story and I started learning you know loving and I saw this other world of spirituality and I was attracted to that. And I've read, uh, and I like to read, and uh, it was, uh, I like to read and I seek the truth. You know, history has always been my favorite subject since, you know, when I was in high school, I used to like to read everything. And and I would read all the U.S. News and World Report and uh, things like that and National Geographic. I remember I started reading the Encyclopedia American. It was Americana, I, I think, uh, is the one I was reading. And I got to about C, about halfway through C. And I, you know, kind of got distracted by something else and went on. But uh, since then, I read thousands and thousands of books about just about everything. I was always interested in physics and astronomy, you know, when I was back in the days when I was using drugs and stuff like that. I would read scientific journals and stuff like that and some books about it and uh, then uh, I got into uh, recovery you know I started saying you know I remember waking up under a bridge one time 
out on Interstate 84, and when I got out, I was sleeping on, on this freeway, and some guy dropped me off there that night. I was hitchhiking, and I woke up the next morning, and I got out on the freeway, and it was like there was not, it was uh, nothing but sagebrush, as far as you could see. I could see some mountains way off in the distance to the north, and I could see some treetops way off in the distance to the south, like kind of like where the Snake River is, you know, it's kind of down in a valley where the river runs. And I could see the top of the trees way down there and I could see the mountains way off to the north. And all I could see other than that was sagebrush. And Interstate 80, I don't know if it was Interstate 84, I'm pretty sure is the one I was on that day. And I was wondering, man, I wish there was some kind of an organization that would help people like me recover you know from whatever was wrong with me because there had to be something wrong with me I couldn't blame society you know they were living in houses and I was living under a bridge out here in the desert and so it was a few years later that I got into recovery and I went through Narcotics Anonymous for years I went to thousands and thousands of NA meetings and went through the 12 steps and I was screaming mad, screaming. Oh, I, you know, I, I, you know, I just, I'm sorry for all the, you screaming, you know, I mean, I was mad, you know, it was painful. But I got clean and uh, I've been clean for more than 30 years now, thank God. And uh, so, I, you know, and once I got into recovery, I started reading more about psychology and physiology and spirituality. I read the Bible, like I've said, five times from start to finish. I read all the most sacred writings of most of the great religions of Earth, you know, and and I've studied it, you know, and so seeking the truth is definitely valuable. And I recommend that you should do that. It will help you in your life. Always seek the truth, no matter what you do, and seek the truth. And um, so, with all that, you know, and I, I try. I started to be a drug rehab counselor. I went to, uh, you know, I went to Idaho State University to be a drug rehab counselor, and they were teaching me that they kept talking about this whole business about how this power differential that if you. Um, you know, you couldn't be friends with your patient because you had power over them because of this power difference. I'm going like, you know what? I don't want to learn that. And that's not what I'm interested in. You know, because I, I believe that whole thing. You know, the founding fathers of the United States are kind of like my father. That's where I learned my values is from the founding fathers of the United States. You know, that whole thing about we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. You know, putting doctors on a pedestal is, is a harmful, it's a mental illness. And I say that right now, here and now. You know, the doctors, they have no authority to do anything other than share their knowledge because they do have valuable knowledge. I'm not saying, you know, that they don't have valuable knowledge, but ordering people around, that's not, that's not, all that is is corrupt oppression, you know. It's a violation of human rights, and it should we got to stop that right now. And uh, you know, if, so I got out of there, and I you know, and I just kind of started getting into computers and trying to figure out how I could sort of thrive, you know, prosper. You know, I want to, I want to live long and prosper. I'm a big Star Trek fan, always have been, and I like. Spock was always my favorite character, you know, I, I guess I like the whole idea of not feeling anything, you know, but And I like being smart. I like reading and I like knowledge and science and all that and so I've been seeking that truth in science, you know, and um, So I started building this website, you know, once I got clean, you know, I wanted to help other people that were had similar circumstances to me. I want to make it as easy as possible for anyone who, young kids, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, teens and 20-somethings, you know, might find this website and read the stories and, and the stories will inspire you to 
do something good in your life, you know, and make make something valuable. And so that's that's what I'm doing. You know, I just want to help people. I want to be a teacher. Always have wanted to be a teacher. You know, that's, that's why I wanted to be a drug rehab counselor. It's you know, it's just a teacher. I remember one time I went to a space business conference in Denver, and we split up. We got in these groups, and we were, what do you get? What would you be doing? What's your idea of? what you would want to do. And my idea was I'd be a teacher and I would do everything over by, by video all across the solar system. I'd have students strung out all across the solar system and I'd be t teaching them. And so that's, and, and now here I am doing it, you know, cause we're still all on earth at this point. And I know there's no real place on in this solar system where humans can actually live for any, length of time you know people we can go explore places but there's no where that human beings can migrate to in this solar system there's no because the one g there's no the only planet other planet besides earth with one g is venus and it's 800 degrees on the surface of venus so we're not going to be terraforming that planet but we could maybe find planets in other solar systems anyway yeah, I just want to help as many people as I can. I want to help you. I want this, these stories, the, both the written stories and these video stories to be like a catalyst because the potential is within every human being. All this knowledge is it's within every human being. And so I'm just wanting to, you know, unleash that within our you because you know, we get all stuck on things and we're told what's right and then we get stuck on that. And sometimes they're right, but other times it's best to think for yourself. And, you know, I like free and open source software for the same reason I like capitalism, which is free enterprise. You know, and I want to teach you to unleash your free enterprise. That's what I want to do. That's my goal. That's the very prime directive. That's the purpose of this website is to teach you to unleash the free enterprise within you. You know, that's that's the my unique selling proposition is to do that. All my books, that's the purpose of my books. That's the purpose of the website. That's the purpose of every story I write is to unleash the free enterprise within yourself. You know, and I, I say be spiritual, you know, because I believe that spirituality is the foundation of freedom. And it's the very nature of freedom is submission to God is the very nature of freedom. That's what freedom is, is submission to God. And, you know, and a lot of people, they want to rebel against God thinking that that's freedom you know, or something and it's like no that's like you're that's just something weird you know so it's like a mental illness of some kind but anyway so yeah submission to God is the nature of freedom and I and I say that through you know I try not to talk too much about God and religion and everything like that because I don't want to be preachy or anything but I can't help talking about it because it's a major, most important part of the story. It, I just, it just doesn't, you know, I spend most of my time talking about Linux and business, how to make money and stuff like that. That's, that's what I want to talk about and write about, you know, some of the, how to be prosperous, how to prosper during your life on earth. And, uh, you know, I'm no big, anything uh, you know I, I like to call myself a wizard because it's a cool name it's a neat little name I don't get I'm not in the the closest thing of, as far as like witchcraft or anything like that, that I'm interested is, is Reiki you know I was certified to be a Reiki person and so I could practice Reiki mostly on myself I just do it on myself sometimes but I'm not really into that kind of stuff, you know. I like the Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine. And, and I like, I believe the best medicine is uh, what they call, uh, it's, um, 
it's a mixture of the brand new scientific medicine, the most advanced scientific medicine and the old ancient medicine. And um, I guess my, I like to keep these meeting, these uh, videos to 15 minutes and I'm already over that now. So I've said enough about me and, you know, but I just want you to let you know that that's what my stories are about is free enterprise. Practice free enterprise in your own life. Thanks and have a great day. Bye. Hi. So, uh, yeah, I made this video about myself yesterday to try to introduce myself to you, the audience. And uh, I, uh, you know, it was okay. And I actually, there's some good parts in it. And that's why I'm doing this video because. I didn't necessarily want to throw that video away because there's a lot of good information in there. But it was kind of incomplete, and so I want to do another video about introducing myself. And mainly about this whole issue of being a wizard or a shaman. I, you know, that's kind of what I've always wanted to be, is a wizard or shaman or a teacher, you know. And so... That's kind of, I wanted to explain that a little bit more. That's, you know, the, this uh, holistic home office is just one, is the, you know, like the vehicle that I want to teach through, you know, and use my website as a teaching tool. And, and um, the whole, my main interest is, is human nature and civilization, you know, and the, the whole computer, artificial intelligence part of my story is it's you know it's uh, yeah, I kind of you know I'm like a double major you know human nature and civilization is my primary course and computer science is my second class you know interest my second interest and so I just wanted to point that out and you know put a couple of videos in my little you know about me story and uh because the the point is, I had a very rough life. My, I, I, my mom was 14. That's not acceptable. That's not okay when I was born. You know, my dad was twice my mom's age, okay? And he would, not only that, he was also an ex-convict. He just got out of prison from the Wyoming State Penitentiary. He spent five years in prison. And he was my, he, you know, and I guess him and his mom kidnapped my mom. And that's how I was born. You know, they kidnapped my mom and took her out in the woods and I was conceived. And so, and then after that, my life was just a nightmare. Was, all the terrible violence, the poverty, the, you know, mostly just scream and yell and not a lot, not too much like physical violence, but some. And uh, what I want this story to be about is healing and giving nobody, no matter what you did, you can recover. You can stop doing what it is. You, you know, you have to repent and make amends for what anything harmful that you've done. But I just want to make clear that you, no matter what you have done, you can recover and be a healthy, you know, healthy human being. You know, a lot of issues, you know, there's, you know, harm, harm, practice harmlessness in your life. You know, don't do anything harmful to yourself or anyone else. And make, uh, you know, work on uh, improving yourself, constantly work on improving yourself, you know, for your entire life. And pay attention to your physical. What are you eating? Make sure you're eating healthy, nutritious food and not processed food, you know. And I, I made a lot of progress in that area, but I still have a lot of progress to make on that. And, you know, stop using drugs. Thank God I stopped using drugs 30 years ago. And I started studying, you know, physiology and psychology and human nature and civilization. And I, I've always been studying civilization, but I started studying health. And uh, I tried to get into, like, becoming a professional healthcare, you know, a counselor, a drug rehab counselor. 
But I just, once I started learning about the politics they were teaching in the school, I kind of got out of there because I don't agree with their politics. I don't believe in that. I think it's corrupt. And I got out of it, you know. After the one year of Idaho State University, I just quit because I don't want to learn what they're teaching, which essentially is that, you know, the doctor is, you know, put the doctor on a pedestal and he has authority. You know, that's why we had, we, we didn't get rid of the king just so we could have doctors tell us what to do and believe and everything, you know. So, you know, I it's just, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, I believe in, for, you know, all men are created equal and no one is more or less important than anyone else. And doctors are definitely, their education is valuable and they have knowledge that is valuable and we need, and I respect that. What I don't respect is that they, they don't have authority over anybody other than themselves, you know, and, and so, you know, that's, so I got into the computer stuff and I started selling, you know, I wanted to try to sell all this, you know, healing, you know, nutritious stuff. I kind of looked in some that I could, how could I make money helping people? And I've done a lot, of, I've tried a lot of different things and, not, you know, network marketing companies that I've tried out, you know, and um, I just, at this point, I get, the only thing I have going really is the Holistic Home Office. I've always had this idea that I would have two websites, Holistic Home Office and Holistic Human Being. And one would be about making money and one would be about living healthy. And just, and I'm not trying to say I'm a doctor or anything like that. I'm just saying that you know, you don't have to be a doctor to know certain things like, you know, eat natural whole food and not this processed food. You know, one time I had a job in a gas station and everything they sold in there was poisonous, literally poisonous. You know, it was, there was alcohol, there was pornography, there was a whole bunch of food and snacks and every single one of them was just, you know, sugar and salt. And which is okay, sugar and salt are okay in, in moderate, you know, amounts, but when it's just sickening, it's sickening to have all that sugar and salt, and, and you know, it's, that's why there's such a epidemic of obesity in the United States right now is because of the nutrition. You know, even the stuff you buy in the grocery stores is processed food. They take the nutrients out of it so the food will last a long time on the store shelf. And then you eat more of it because you're not getting the nutrients, so you're always hungry, you know, because, and then, but, you, you know, so anyway. That's, that kind of stuff, you know. Don't take drugs. Using drugs is, destroys your body. No, I don't care what anybody says. You know, it doesn't matter what drug it is. Alcohol is a drug. And using any drug, mind-altering substance. Altering your mind is degrading your mind. And the damage is both chronic. You know, it's both acute and chronic. In other words, it, 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 being intoxicated is a, dis, is a uh, degraded state of consciousness. And then uh, the damage is permanent, you know. And it, you know, your your brain, your killing brains, brain cells are being destroyed. And not only that, but they're you're making patterns in your brain that just they're harmful. They're not natural or healthy, and they, you know, they make life difficult, and um, they make life shorter. You know, your life is a lot shorter. And uh, and I can tell you, after being clean for thirty years, that. I like my life. I enjoy life. Even with not having a lot of luxuries or anything like that, I'm a happy camper, you know. And I, you know, when I compare myself to like at work and what's, who gets the work done, I, I can outwork all my, most of the people that work there. You know, a lot of them, they have a lot more experience, so they're kind of smarter and I'm always asking questions, but I mean, I work. And because it, it's, better you know to work hard and not than it is to just try to get out and do it you know not work as much as you can you know and it's like that's like what well, that's not fun you know I want to be I want to be a high performance no matter what I do I want to be a high performance 
you know, high performance, holistic healer and teacher is my real main goal in life, or a high performance computer scientist. And uh, I don't really know that much about computers. I, I don't think I'm very good at computers, but I, I like using free and open source software. The reason I, I read the Microsoft Windows user agreement from start to finish back in the 1990s, and I said, you know, my answer was no, I don't agree that Microsoft owns the software on my computer. And I, I just, a few years later, I started using Linux and I've been using it ever since. And I use Microsoft. I don't really have anything against them owning their system, their ecosystem, the way they're doing it, their platform. But uh, I want, I like private property. Private property is a very important feature of Western civilization and, you know, capitalism and, you know, the, this whole social and economical revolution, you know, starting with the Industrial Revolution, starting with the, really the Enlightenment and all that and, the, the, you know, the Reformation, all that whole Western civilization, how it started in the Industrial Revolution. And that was all created by people thinking for themselves and making their own decisions and not being told what to do all the time, you know, and, uh, you know, unleash the free enterprise within yourself. You know, that's what I want to do is teach you how to do that. And it's not me doing it. It's you doing it in your own life. You know, I, I, my stories are, I want my stories just to be a catalyst to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. You know, I, I, it's like, I, I just think about myself when I was 20 something. I wish there would have been somebody there teaching me values and, and how to su succeed in life. And my parents, they were just partying. They were having fun and we were all having fun, you know, but I didn't get that education. I have struggled to survive and there's other things I've done that I can't really blame on anybody other than myself. And you know, that's caused a lot of harm for myself and, and other people. I've caused a lot of trouble in my life and I regret that and want to try to make up for it if I can, as much as I can. And, you know, I just, you know, most importantly, I want to be a Baha'i. I believe in Baha'u'llah and I want to serve the cause of Baha'u'llah. I, you know, that's a very important, that's the, the most important part of my life is being a Baha'i, even though I don't think I'm a very good Baha'i. I'm still pretty contentious and which is not, you know, Baha'i, Baha'u'llah, you know, that's one thing, you know, conflict and contention are strictly forbidden in the Baha'i faith and that's not exactly you know, conflict and contention are kind of normal for me, you know what I mean? So, you know, and I'm getting better. I'm a lot better than I used to be. And so I just, I like life and I'm enjoying life and I want to help as many people as I can do so also. You know, all this poverty and stuff is, and, and drug abuse that is drag, you know, it's an epidemic proportions. And... I want to help solve that problem and I'm working on it. I'm always working on it and I'll keep working on it for as long as I'm alive on earth. I'm going to be working on that and uh, it's fun. I like, I, you know, I think that I am, I'm kind of, you know, my dad was a hypnotist and a psychic channeler, even though I didn't really know him a lot about him, you know, I'm, I think, and so I don't want to do any of that kind of, Playing with magic is not a good idea. I don't approve of that. It's wrong. I don't think that's a good idea. But I do consider myself to be kind of a wizard, you know, wise man or, or a shaman. You know, I have some knowledge. Because of reading, I, re I didn't just, I wasn't born with it. I learned it by reading. And I mean, I'm talking thousands of books. And, you know, like the Bible and the Quran and scientific books literature and all I've been seeking the truth my whole life and I have a lot of knowledge to share and I like sharing it and so that's what I do and I you know my I've tried to thank God my mom introduced me to the Mormon religion and I got interested in religion and spirituality and 
you know, and that's kind of kept me out of a lot of trouble. And so I'm now I'm a Baha'i. I found out about Baha'u'llah and I became a Baha'i and uh, I practice it to the best of my ability, you know, and there's no, there's no wizards or, or there's no clergy in the Baha'i faith. So I, I'm not even trying to go there or anything like that. I'm just trying to be a, a helper. You know, I want to help people. And so that's, here comes my 15 minutes. So I, I, you know, I just wanted to clear that out. I like to help people and that's what I'm trying to do. So thanks a lot and have a great day.